So we're here at the Comedy Cellar. This is the Cheat Day Show. I'm here with someone, i got to be honest, a little intimidated to be doing this podcast with Why? Them. Jared Freed, the J Train. Intimidated? That's crazy. I'm you so do, excited. You do like 12 podcasts. Yeah, but that, that's just talking. Yeah, yeah, but this is, this is a... Uh... It is a little loud. Oh, all well, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just tell me, tell me what it is. In my expertise, I would say, say? Uh, take me down a little bit on Which the earphones. One? Which one? The, yeah, yeah. Is this you? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when. I don't Over. think that's me. Okay. That's not me. There I am. Okay. There we go. A uh, little higher. Okay. A little higher. Now we're good. That's perfectionist. Good. Yeah, I got to make sure this, this is done right. Uh, we, were, we were talking before the show. So you're doing like, what, 20 hours of broadcasting a week? No, it's not 20 hours. Six hours of podcasts a week I put out to the world in different forms. You know, I, and you do one Name show them. and then you Name pick them. a Plug J Train podcast. That's twice a week. That's J Train on Mondays. Yeah. Luxury Lounge on Thursdays. Uh, the Luxury Lounge. J Train is an advice podcast. People write in with their advice questions. Dating. L- lots of dating. I like they went with Lifestyle. love. Lifestyle. <laughs> um, luxury Lounge is people write in with their luxury complaints during the pandemic. Mm. There was a problem that I needed to help fix. You couldn't complain about anything else except pandemic related things. What's a luxury problem? So anything was a luxury problem. My butler is giving me the stink eye. Right. Ah! We've gotten, my, my engagement ring is too big. Too big. Right. I, ha- I can't wear it to work because I work around people that would gawk at my ring. And you go, I do understand that complaint. You know, you, you have to change your life. All right. So this is someone who's very wealthy that's clearly volunteering at like a homeless shelter. Whatever they're like, doing. My ring's too big and I might be murdered. So. <laughs> right. I got to. And they go, there's nowhere else I could go but the luxury lounge. And all complaints are welcome. But we also take small. You know, it doesn't have to be a rich complaint. It can just be that. The that'd be funny that you're disqualifying compliance. Right. Like, oh, yeah. That's not luxury. This is you peasant hobo. Right. Uh, <laughs> you, you, it wasn't your own jet. Oh. Right. No. 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 We we take all complaints. Like you, listen, it could be a thousand air issue. It could be a millionaire issue. It could be a billionaire issue. So it's really the idea that you couldn't complain at all. Like if someone was like, "Oh, my date got canceled," I'd be like, "Oh, well, you're lucky. Your grandma didn't die." And you're like. <laughs> Can I just fucking complain about a date and something normal for two seconds? So that's the luxury lounge. And then I do the You Up podcast with Betches. And that's a modern dating podcast. We t- talk all things modern dating. And it's like dating and technology, date, you know, just stuff that's going on in 2022. And then I do uh, The Bachelor with Betches. And that's the, the Bachelor podcast, so like a recap show. Because I love The Bachelor. And then, I, I think I'm actually on your podcast right now. I think right. you might have taken this I've one taken, over. You told me <laughs> to explain <laughs> these. I, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm like, I think he's just branched out and taken over the comedy right, seller as well. I don't know what's going I got, on. I just keep getting new ways to not shut the fuck up. All it's impressive. The time. It's impressive. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm curious about the luxury thing. I mean, like, what did you ever have a favorite complaint or? The wedding ring one is the one I always bring up, and it always, I, it, it always like explains the show well. But it doesn't, like, I, we've gotten, I'm trying to think of another one that would be fun. For, I, for me, uh, I got cut off in first class. I thought that was. What do you mean cut off? Like, didn't want to serve me. Oh, really? Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, that, yeah. That's frustrating. We've had, we've had people write in that they were staying at a hotel and the vent was making noise and they sent a video of the vent making noise. And you go, that's horrific. Like, you paid for a hotel. You, you, this vent is going, like, it sounded like Woody Woodpecker. And it's like. It's really when you expect higher living and then you get kind of treated with not, you know? Joining us, Sherrod Small. Am I on? You're on. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? It might just be your earphones. Oh, your it might be left. Okay. We can hear you fine. Okay, perfect. Look at that. Sherrod hey, Small Sherry, making baby. Oh, there Good we go. Thank you. Thank you. Did today? you I'm, I'm doing this and then going. I, I okay. this got, See, I got the weights with me now. Do you really? Yeah, they're right over there on the Sherrod and I go to the same workout field yeah. and work out on the West Side Highway. Oh, I hear it's a very inspiring field. It's a great field. Oh, it's a lot of chicks over there, too. <laughs> so many hot people just hot walking people. all along the West Side Highway, especially depending on the weather. But even a day like today will That's be good. like a very, people will be out. Yes. And it's, a, it's nice to just sit out there. And instead, like I used to go to a gym and now I just like, just being able to be outside. It's much better. Much better. Okay. Much better. And plus, the quality of people out there. So, Sherrod, how much weight did you lose? Uh, about 30, 30 something. 
Uh, 30 pounds. You yeah. yeah, just speak into it. Yeah, 30, so 30 pounds. 30 big But I ones. gained fucking 40 during uh, lockdown. So this was, uh, this was the come down. This was the come down. And I didn't realize how big I got until I shot the, uh, Harlem on Amazon Prime. And we was doing playbacks on uh, on the set. And I was like, why is Craig Robinson doing my lines? <laughs> That's when you know it's time to lose weight. <laughs> right. I had the Pizza Hut gut. Well, I mean, it looked good on you. You wore it well. But Thanks. you obviously, so you you and Jerry work out together but because uh, you have your... Well, not together. And... Sometimes I go out early. Yeah, he goes out like 9 o'clock. And I psychopath. see him coming coming too. Yeah, while well, he's coming and then, But then today I got, you know, I, I have this guy send me workouts. So, like, he was like, I can't get him to you until I'm done with my, like... The trainer. Training, yeah. Okay. Right. So, it's not just some random guy. No, it's not <laughs> just like a homeless guy. Is that the same guy, guy who did, uh, did some classes out on a uh, pier? Okay. No, it, he does classes and stuff. His name's, he goes by Four Zag on Instagram. I promote him like crazy. Okay. Because he just sends me these like 45-minute lifts, and all I need... You know, we go on the road, and you stay in a hotel, and you don't know... The problem with staying in shape or trying to get in shape is variability. Yeah. You know, variables all day long. And you go, you go on the road, and then you show up to this gym, and it's a closet. Yeah. And then you go... Ah, I'm fucked. And then you like, eat on the road as well. So you eat wrong, right. and the gym stinks. Right. A drink or two. It happens. A drink or two. I and never like gyms, though. I, that's the thing. I, I, I feel confined by it. You're alone. It's boring. And sometimes the TV doesn't work. It's just like one. And you're like, the TV isn't even changing. So I'm just literally stuck with my own thoughts. Yeah. So he has these 45-minute, like, you know, con- you know, contain thing where I know once it's done, I'm done. Right. Like I don't want to. And also, I'm my own worst enemy. I go on an elliptical for seven minutes. I'm like, that was an hour. <laughs> you know, That's like, why I like dude. to do distance. That's why I right. from. I'll do six miles with the weights. Oh, I don't, Give me I, a goal. Yeah. If I can get. I there, love get it though. I love just shits, get I know I'm making it. a treadmill and elliptical. Just I just get on and blank out. Just Come on. Go. I'm serious. I don't. You know what I mean? It's just my. It's my way to tune everything out. But you know what do you think of? Well, what do you do on a hard? People, I want to murder. Just, okay. yeah, <laughs> just, a lot of murder going on up there. But I'm not texting. Is right. what I'm just, I'm just it would like, be nice to see. It wouldn't it be great to see everyone's thoughts as they're on a treadmill, like just hear what they're thinking. Like, oh, I know, you know it's awful stuff. It'd be awful, awful garbage, stuff. gross things. You, the worst thoughts happen on a treadmill. But well, you got to do it though. You got to do it. Got to do it. Well, I mean, you also dead, you so. also uh, are very mindful of your health. I try, but, you know, alcohol gets in the way. You know, you got to do a 2 o'clock podcast where you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Luxury problems, This is Jared. a, this is a triggering problems. podcast for me. This is triggering. <laughs> I know you tried to avoid it. He yeah. yeah. tried to down. avoid right. it. It sets you like two months ago. Right. right. He was like, no, I can't. I'm I on this thing. Well, I don't want you. I would, if this podcast happened at, ten, you know, 11 o'clock on a Friday night, I'd be like, Boom. Right. Great. Kind of the clock is running out. Like, I eat at night, and it's my problem. Right. So when you eat at night, you're like, I, I can do the day. I can get through the day. I can have a protein bar right. at 2 o'clock. I can get to 6 o'clock. But then I get to 7 o'clock, and I go, it's dinner time. And it is the last meal of the day, so it better be fucking good. And I sit there, and I, I get angsty about it. I'm like, oh, I want to have the perfect meal. It has to be delicious and nutritious and right. volatile. Volume, voluminous, vo- vo- voluminous, voluminous, and, right? Uh. And it, so you need it to be big and filling and delicious and different. And you can never find that combo. That's why the road is tough because you get hungry, hungry, hungry. You go, I got to find something healthy, healthy, healthy. And, uh, and then it's like, no, but it's got to be good. I'm in Richmond. I got to get something different because I'm here. I'm never going to be here again. To this, man, yeah. Local to this yeah. area. Yeah, so you, and then you go, well, now I'm fucked. And so like that was so with the, this podcast where you're like. Two o'clock on a Tuesday, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, I don't want to eat anything at two o'clock on a Tuesday. Right. This is get right time. This you is might the come down. Sleep during and after this, you're going to get another. Wisconsin night. after go the sleep. show. Right. <laughs> as many bratwursts as we could possibly oh, get. Oh <laughs> my God. Milwaukee is the is the probably the toughest place in the country to eat because yeah. it has everything good and wonderful and alcohol. Meaty, cheesy, alcoholic. Yes. Uh-huh. Everything. Yes. They, at three a.m. And, and, the, it and it's all on top of a Bloody Mary. They put everything on it. <laughs> So it's not just, it's cheese and a roast chicken and a cheeseburger on top of your Bloody Mary. And you're like, it has everything I want in this one glass. And on the road, if you eat in your hotel room, 
Mm. And like, don't eat it all, and then fall asleep and wake up two in the morning. You eat the rest, right, right, right. You're gonna yeah, eat yeah, yeah. those cold, whatever, whatever it is. It's so gross, but I do it all the time. I do it, and it's so hard. And that's what, like, and so, for, and this is my pro. It's my problem that I put on other people. Right. Like, I had a buddy who used to. He not used to. He still does, but he doesn't live in town anymore. But he owned a bar, and he would always try to get everyone together. And he would always try to get everyone together. He'd be like, "Okay, Tuesday." Eight o'clock, and I'd be like, I don't want to do everyone get seven pizzas right. and fries on Tuesday because I'm going to do my problem is I'm going to do this on Friday. If I do it on Tuesday, it's happening on Friday no matter what. Right. I need, I can control Tuesday right. to an extent. I can have four bowls of popcorn Tuesday night and go, well, it was popcorn. I tried my best. <laughs> right, right. I didn't can't feel do heavy. it. Right. I can't. <laughs> Friday, I can go, well, I had a good week, so why don't I? And then what you do is you rationalize everything. This yeah. is the problem. And, and, you end up with two cheetahs. You end up with two cheetahs. The lockdown that's the problem. almost got me, though. I was having night burgers every night. Really? Every night. I was well, that's the thing. Time, night. idle hands are the devil's, you know, oh, yeah, masturbation menu. tools. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> and plus, just being in a city, you walk right. around, you move. Mm -hmm. so and there's everything. Nothing, I was doing no movement. Oh, and, you, and then you're sitting in the apartment, and then you, everyone was doing the thing where they pack up, you know, get as much groceries as possible. Yeah, and eat and, them all. Try not to eat them all in one week. Right. It, oh, one day. It was a, that's why I started with the trainer, because what I did, I was like, okay, I know this is the worst thing that could happen for me, right. like uh, physically. So I went to the trainer. I go, can you do an hour? What do, you, what do you think you can do? And he sent me in, in the, during the pandemic. Uh -huh. He sent an Uber with bands. Like, in the backseat of the Uber were bands that he was sending to me. Wow. And I worked out with the bands at first. I had weed delivered to me, like, right. <laughs> in Miami. <laughs> we live very different right. lives. Very We're getting we do live different exercise right. equipment delivered. I'm like, I had booze delivered. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I can get rid of an hour of the day. Like, here's the other thing. I get hungry, and I go work, and I'm like, well, you could eat before or after. I always go after. Because if you eat before, you ain't going to work out. You ain't going to work out. And while I'm working out, my mind is busy. It's on and something. you're not as hungry as when you were way right before you started working out. Exactly. And yes. it's like, this is such a mental game. Yes. It is such a men And like, you know, cheat day, you know, that's why a cheat day exists. Because you're like, there's the goal. There's what I can get to. I can go from, Monday might be grilled chicken, but Sunday is going to be, you ever like see The Rock's cheat day? No. The Rock posts oh, yeah, cheat did day. Oh, yeah, Yeah. It's always like what I would get at a sushi restaurant on a Thursday. I know, and I'm I like, know. ugh, come on, dude. But you can tell, like, he puts a lot of thought yeah. into what's that Sunday going to be and what's the combination and what, uh, well, how big can I go? And when I was the healthiest I've ever, or not healthy, I don't think it's healthy, but I think when I was the most strict mm -hmm. I've ever been, I once did cheat, I would do cheat days. I would get two a week, but I was being strict. Right. I lost like 50 pounds during this time. And I was like, I'll never forget, I would do these cheat days, and you would eat so much that you'd feel sick. Yeah. yeah. So it would convince you out of it for when you got strict again. So it was like, it helped, but I don't know how long you can keep that up for. Like the strictness? The strictness, and just the, the yeah, the strictness, and then looking for, because you what always- What was your strict days looking like? Oh, I was eating oatmeal with like a protein shake to wake up. <laughs> And then I was eating two tablespoons, three hours later, two tablespoons of peanut butter with three slices of turkey. <laughs> then I was eating, three hours later, I was having three slices of turkey on 12 grain bread. Yeah. Then three hours later, I was having another two scoops of peanut butter with three slices of turkey. And then another three hours, three slices of turkey on 12 grain bread. And that was, and then before bed, another shake. So it was like, and that was a full day. Masturbating that was a, 15 times a day. Right. Just, just like a, a lot of time course. to fill. So much masturbating. I'm going to of seven grains because 12 right. grains is just too rocks. A lot of grains. It's too much rocks in there. <laughs> yeah, you're eating sand. Like eating pebbles. Right, right. And so that was when it was, But then you get to that Sunday cheat day and you go, here I'm we go. A Everything, right? <laughs> That's what we would eat. Eat yeah. a prostitute. What's your go-to when, you, like, when you were in that mode? It everything like I like I like a poo poo platter. Like yeah. I want it You're all. Big Chinese food guy. Big Chinese food guy. Seen your videos of you dancing with a bag of Chinese food. Love a food. Chinese food order. <laughs> Love like and that's What's the your other order to go. What, what do you usually get when you get Chinese? 
I like Kung Pao chicken, yeah, it's but it's, I like it when it's with peanuts and not a lot of bell peppers. Some people go too high in the hot bell peppers. Right. I like fried rice. Fried rice, absolutely. Do you get anything? Pork like fried rice. Fried, pork pork yeah, fried, pork shrimp fried. fried. Uh, There's a place called KYU, which just opened in Manhattan. It's called, uh, they're in Miami. They have a crab fried rice that is the best I've ever ever had in my entire life like and they kind of like do it at the table like it's a guacamole it's up here now it's here in the city okay they just opened it is one of the best dishes i've ever had really oh my god dude and they have a short rib thing that you can make like a lettuce cup short rib there kyu i can't recommend it enough but it's i i and then i'll do like a soup and an appetizer like i the thing is Chinese food is emotional for me too. Like that was like Sunday night. You sit down, like you have a, up. growing up, a bunch of dishes in right. the middle. You could have a little bit of everything. Right. You didn't really. There was no really. That's yours. This is mine. No, we're all having. We're that's all digging like, in. Yeah. yeah, and that, that you got the lazy Susan in the middle yes. of the table rolling around. Yeah, that and so. So what dish would you choose for that? So I would assume that your father would order a bunch of stuff. Like, your but mother you name would... was Susan? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's what they call it. We, <laughs> we, I mean, we, she ain't cooked the Chinese food, but the bitch at least took it off the back. Oh, you mean the turning thing. The turning thing, oh, okay. yes. Um, no, we get it all. A chicken, a, 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 chicken, a shrimp, a lo mein, a rice, a soup, an appetizer, uh, spare ribs, cut short. Like, there was like... Sp- well done, you know, wings. You yeah. get, you know, it's like a tapas, like tapas kind of, you, yes. you get a little bit of everything. Everything. And, oh, and Chinese food here hasn't lived up to Chinese food in Boston. He's got a real beef with New York City Chinese food. There's something off about it. There's yeah. something, it's, it's, I, it's like they're all made in the same kitchen here. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. It feels they like get, one kitchen the delivers to everywhere. They, all the ingredients coming from one place. Yes. Is yes, that what are. it is? Yeah. thousand percent. All the, all, so that's all what the if, pots, pans, ingredients, all that's coming from one place. This the same is location. actually comforting to know because I've had the... I've talked about this with Sam J. And Sam J. and I are from... Boston, yeah. The Boston area. So, like, we... We're, one night we were just talking about... Ch- and she was like, Chinese food here is garbage. And I go... How, oh my god I totally agree and it was weird because like Sam and I didn't grow up together but we were like towns away right. and she's like and you know uh, we were talking about lobster sauce is, is is a certain color and like we both had this like very similar like like it was amazing how much we knew the the look of Chinese food in Boston right. how compared it was to di- compared to this yeah it's and different mobs running it right that's what it is right and then someone told me it was Cantonese in Boston I don't know Maybe. I, I, so the, the, there's like a whole background thing of like was where it do people Sichuan here I don't know yeah. where do people move okay, from Sichuan. is that what it is I think so so you go I'm just used to a different Chinese food I tried talking to you know Ronnie Chang about this. I was like, "Do you?" And he's not even from China. You know, like, yeah, but he's China. Malaysian, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, "How did this get yeah. racist?" He's like, <laughs> he's like, LA, LA's got a different taste of Chinese too. It's not, it's not as good as New York. LA, yeah. Oh, to- it's much worse. There's much a place. Worse. There's gotta a be pl- poor to make Chinese food. As Chinese people, there's gotta, gotta be- come over in the belly of the ship. <laughs> right. Not first class. <laughs> right. You gotta be dancing in the belly. Yeah. You gotta they- know how to make you know awful into something. You gotta take pork and make the most of it. Right. I mean, there's a place in L.A. What's it called? It's so funny. I, and I thought it was funny because it was like they do comedy shows there. It's called like I know it. In, in a West it has Hollywood? a Jewish name, Genghis Cohen. Yes, Genghis Cohen. It's called Genghis Cohen. Yeah, it's like a seventies exploitation movie. It, <laughs> <laughs> what I love about Genghis Cohen is like it, there was an admission that like it, it, it's basically the whole premise of the restaurant is like northeast northeast yeah. American Chinese, Chinese food. food, right? And you're like, that's bizarre. And then I walked in there to do a show once. I was like, I felt the. F- you know, I felt uh, the feelers. Like I was like, "Oh, this is familiar to me." Yes, the smells, right? Stuff, and yeah. it was and it was South Pacific theme. That's oh, what a they, lot yeah, of them they are. really they really Asianed it up. They well, really, it's like it's, it's but that's that's the places yeah. I used to go to. We used to go to a place called South Pacific, right. outside of, in the you know the, the suburban Boston area. Like, and you go to Mandarin you know, cuisine, and you know it, it is a part. I mean, there's places that people hang out in Boston. You know, Kowloon is a comedy place, and that was like. A place people went, right. you know, like it all kind of, a, it, it, it's weird how it mixes in with your childhood in a way that you're like, that isn't my people, but it's my people. Right. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Like, but Chinese food in Brooklyn used to be, I thought it was the best. Right. And then I went to college in Maryland. I was like, 
first of all, these niggas are Mexican. Chinese folk, nigga, go to Maryland and try to have a right. You'd be like, this shit is abomination. It's garbage. Garbage. Yeah, and Your I. Life is too, like, rice is puffy. I'm like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> and I've gotten drunk in, in most of these places and ordered Chinese food. <laughs> and I'm there at, like, you know, Two in the morning, using you know the the coffee stir to try and eat because they didn't give me any utensils. Oh, you, know? you don't know shame until you end up at Wohop at three a.m. I love Wohop. I think is the best because it digs into that, like it digs into what the like recipes. At, like, w- well, Wohop is one of the few that you can like eat there. Right, that's a big part of it. It's not like a delivery station, and so I enjoy the atmosphere there. But, it, but at least I'm hammered. At least I'm in a basement. Right. You know, the guy comes over with the pen and paper, and you're like, "This again? I I can't believe how emotional it is." But it is. It is. It brings back memories. Even like Chinatown here is different Chinese food than a Chinese restaurant. Right. It's a whole different thing, and I love it down there. Right. And those they are real dim sum. Fucking. Little they got the dead animals hanging in the window. Love oh, it. Oh yeah. Love it. That's how you know it's good. Yeah, but I don't see a duck hang a duck, a duck, a side. duck, right? With the full, <laughs> with the full head and everything, you're like, oh, <laughs> like the sheriff killed him. Yeah, <laughs> sending a message That's right. <laughs> to the other ducks. Right. I hear Flushing's got good Chinese food now. Yes, because all the Chinese all people Chinese, live yeah. there now. Right. Yeah. That's the spillover. When you go in, if you go into a Chinese restaurant and Chinese people are eating there, you can go there. Things are good. It's gonna be not what you used to. Right. Well, I went to China. And there is no duck sauce in China. No. They, <laughs> Did you ask? I, I was <laughs> like, it. will they have duck sauce? That was my big thing. And then it's I like, don't see the that is American. Yeah, as, okay. That's as American as apple pie. Duck sauce. Oh, it's egg not, rolls. Egg rolls. Duck sauce. You, you find out very quickly. And I, had, I was with that guy. He used to come here all the time. He, he booked me in China. What was the name of? Was it the club or the it was, circuit? It was the club, and it was um, what was his name? But he now he, he runs the scene out there. Yeah. And oh, I know you talk about. I know you. Yeah, talk he's about. buddies with Will. Yeah. And yeah. so I went out there. He had like a last minute spot open up, and I went over there, and like he had to order, and I was like, order everything. Like I want to try it all, but it was a, and it was delicious, just different. Different, different. You know, they're not coming out with you know. Spare ribs. Oh, no. styrofoam. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> With a styrofoam. Right. <laughs> Melted styrofoam because the, the food was so hot when they put it in. Oh, uh, yeah. I loved it. Ooh. I remember when the first Chinese restaurant opened. Uh, I grew up on Decatur Street in the Brooklyn, bed And I remember, like, we used to have one on Ralph Avenue, but you have to walk two blocks to get to it. Then one opened, like, right around the corner from my block, mm. and we went ape shit. <laughs> and then, we was in there so much. Of course, we'd be like, no way, no Chinese restaurant would open down here. We in the hood. Even though it's always a hood, but you had one for the hood. Mm-hmm, now you had mm-hmm. competition. It's like two blocks away from each other. Oh, now they're, I mean. It was it... so good. Right. Everyone's talking about it. It was so good, man. Even the wings, the rice, everything tastes different. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to, then I went to college in Maryland. I was like, I'm never eating Chinese food in Maryland. There's some places that just can't do it. They can't do it in Maryland. Maybe well, we... D.C. more, but No. When I lived uptown, right. we had we had one right on our block, but I just love the names of them. Is uh, number one food, <laughs> like, right? Well, well, that's also a version. That's a version of American Chinese food too. Where like, where do you want to go? The gross one or the good one? Yeah. And like the gross one is delicious too, yeah. but it's just a description. Like the styrofoam box, like oh, let's go to the let's go to the one that's really gonna be greasy, right. uh-huh. you know? Versus like you know, it's like a. That's I, why you get takeout. You don't want to see the place, right? Like, so, well, there's a cheeseburger. There's a version of a cheeseburger that you go. I'm going to the the cheeseburger place. Where I don't want to look at the back and see the how dirtier they dirtier one's better. Yeah. Right. Drink and you want a different food. Just like this 7th Avenue burger up here. Yeah. In the daytime, it's high. <laughs> right. At night, when you drink, it's like, that's the best burger I've ever had. Right. <laughs> it's so, so loud. Drunk food, I mean, I am a drunk eater. Yeah. And it is. There is something, it hits you different. You, you, you're so. The happiness I feel while doing it, while eating drunk food, is. Oh, it is equal to the sadness I feel in the morning, oh, the morning. when I realize what I've eaten. <laughs> That's right. right? When I wake up and I see it, and I see a big McDonald's thing, and I go, oh, uh, Jared. It's like I'm... It's like I have like short term memory loss. I, I go, oh no, and then you go, yeah. oh maybe it was just one McNugget. No, oh. it's thirty. Yeah, it's an addiction. Yeah. Oh no, you're right because you're like, oh I had, I only had salmon for lunch. I did real good, and then right. you see the McDonald's stuff. You're like, oh crap. Oh my god. Oh, no. Yeah, I like a nice greasy pizza too. When oh, you're I like doing uh, doing a pizza appetizer for wherever else you're gonna go. Oh. 
you get the pizza, you get a slice of pizza, and then on your way to go to the, (laughs) you get the pizza as you already ordered Postmates. So you got the, you know, you're having the pizza on the way to eat your Chinese food. You're mixing nationalities. I I am impressed. Got a Happy Meal, like a a, a, a double cheese, a quarter pound or whatever. Yeah. And then stop and get four wings from the Chinese restaurant. (laughs) That is not even surprising. This is my life. Right. This is where I'm happiest. But then you wake up, you go. I can't. What you, you do, and this is the sad part, or the the part that I, I hate, is that I punish myself the next day. Yeah. So I go. I I had all this garbage that like. Did I taste it? I don't know. <laughs> and then <laughs> you wake up and you go, oh, I can't even like go get a nice breakfast. Because I'm full. Full. Oh, yeah. I'm genuinely full. And I'm like, I could have had the dinner that I, of my dreams. And I spent just as much, especially with Postmates now. Like, you know, that's, an, that's another thing. Like, Postmates will be like fifty dollars for chicken fingers. I'm like, of course, that's yeah. how much they cost. If someone was charging me fifty dollars for chicken fingers during the day, I'd be like, are you out of your fucking mind? I'm not spending fifty dollars on. It. And then at night, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. How, how much else would it be? I forgot how much it actually costs because I kept using apps. Dude, it's the apps too the because apps, it's right in it. your face. Two taps. I had to delete them, and then you delete them like a, they're a dating app. Like I delete them, and I and I'm like, I oh, spent some money on Chinese food, man. Them. Right? And Chinese food delivered. Oh yeah, dude. It it, 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 it gets shouldn't up cost. There. Chinese food is supposed it's to be cheap, time. but it, it, yeah. Dude, I ordered I ordered pink berry the other. Not pi- yeah, pink berry. I was like, I'm gonna get some f- pink berry. Right. I'll get a medium. I'll get two toppings. $35. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Right on the nose. $35. $35 without boots. tip. That's crazy. And crazy. When, you're when you're in the house, it's like, ah, it's worth it. I, it I got to get my pink berry. It ain't never worth it. <laughs> $35. That's like, that's more than like, that's probably like $3 a, like a, a spoonful. Yes. On your couch, everything's yes. very reasonable. Yeah. All of a sudden. I and it's use like my legs. Right. That's worth like $35. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the fat time of the year now. Well, oh, now God. it's the I don't want to walk time of year. I don't, it's the it's dinners. Triggering. Well, Holidays. also events going back to coming here a Tuesday at two o'clock to eat. You yeah. go, you know, Thanksgiving shows up on a Thursday. Did uh, you, Christmas did, shows up on a Tuesday. You know, it, it doesn't really it work. It off. It did you get a slice of pizza off, before right. you? I got a slice. Well, I'm going to get it on the way out. And then what I do is, and the, and the worst thing I do is you try to mask it with alcohol. You go, well, alcohol frees me to do these things. Right. You go, well, because, you know, the, the drink makes me feel less guilty. Guilty. Because you go, and that's where you go, oh, this is a fucking problem. There's yeah. one problem's feeding the next. Yeah. Literally, pun intended. It's like wings and beer. And right. Fucking, before you know it, I'll go through 40 wings. And you and seven beers, right? Big ones. Taco Bell's open all night now too. And then you start rationalizing. You go, well, chicken's protein. <laughs> you know, I had, you know, like I don't I, know what dipping sauce is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get yeah. the, li- the light ranch that, with that. That's what I'll do. That's the that's the saddest part about getting a nutritionist. I I work with a nutritionist, but like you know, work with her. Like she's just very nice to me and takes my texts right. if I have questions. But is she cooking for you or are you? No. So she's referred me to another person who cooks dinners for me sometimes. So like, you know. Alex Turoff, Alex with an I, she's a nutritionist that I've worked with for a couple of years now, and she was like a fan who was like, I, you know, if you have any questions, you got my number, cool. reach out. So like, if I go to like Richmond, she'll go, here are restaurants and menus and things on the menu you can get. And I think, okay, right, and and that's the variability ruins everything. So and so that would help me. Like when I would go to the Delta Sky Club, I said to her, I go, I go, what's what can I eat at the Delta Sky Club? Give me a breakfast. I don't want to walk in there and see the potatoes and rash. I don't want any wiggle room. And she was like, you can have two hard-boiled eggs, a third hard-boiled egg, but only the white of it, and then a banana. And I go, okay. All right. And I do that, and I am not full, but I'm satisfied. Right. I'm not hungry anymore. Right. Not hungry. I feel good. If I just say... Fuck Alex Turov. You know, like I, if I have a day where I'm like I'm hungover, fuck it. I'll d- dance around that Delta Sky Club. It's dangerous. I'll do I'll do seven laps. Chef Bo used to do the menu for that Delta. You know, no, I didn't know that. First class and see his dumb face, and I, I'm like I'm gonna eat everything on here. Right, because <laughs> I know this dude. That, right, you got I gotta see what he's doing. Uh, I gotta see his new up. material. Oh, he was doing it up. <laughs> <laughs> he's been writing. Right, <laughs> this, guy, this guy's creative. I no, but I and then you know. 
you get off of the, you know, once you have the, for me, this is my personal thing. When I have that two eggs, the egg white plus the banana, banana I go, I, I know what I'm going into. I know what I'm walking out. I know when to stop. I need a beginning, middle, and end of my meals. Yeah. When there's no end, I am like a dog. I, yeah. I'll go until you need it kills a program. Me. Right. Well, so don't, I, well, I used to be 320 pounds. I went to yeah. a nutritionist. Even if you fall asleep it, uh, and you wake up and it's still there, you're going to eat it. Going to eat it. And, and the worst thing is you don't know what I, th- I have in my mind what calories are. I have but then you, calories. when you talk to a nutritionist, that's the most depressing part. You're like, what about a bagel? And she's like, well, you can have a quarter of it. And you're like, oh, don't even, <laughs> like, if I'm eating a quarter of a bagel, just end it for me right now. Don't you supposed to have like 1,500 calories a day? What's like the, I think it was like 2,000. 2,000? That's it, not enough. That's not enough. That's, this, not, well, it's I mean, also that's what they say. That's isn't it different they, for every size person? Yeah, it's not an exact science. No, none but of this is exact. It's around 15 to 2,200 calories yeah. a day for well, you're a whole day. Right. You're supposed you know, to. Bubblicious nigga got <laughs> 3,000 calories. <laughs> <laughs> not even yeah. chew gum. Like candy and shit like that, I don't mess with. No, that's the thing. It's not, not even worth it. my food. Right. And then I walk, I mean, in the city, you walk more. Yeah. So that's like... That's like a saving grace for me. Yeah. Walking here from my apartment. That's a, you know, it's a nice little little chunk of chunk of steps. You need it. Even the subway that's walking to the bodega. It's like during lockdown, I didn't know walking. Right. I was in a car and I rode the bike around a lake a couple times, but <laughs> I wasn't doing that a lot. But then I always wonder about sub like suburban people and you go They get fat. How do you do it? Every nigga I went to school with fat as shit. I was like they don't. Right. They, got <laughs> cars, <laughs> they roll off the car and roll in the house. And, Right. They look older at any age. Age. Yeah. It ages you. Yeah. You think it's that? I always felt the comedy kept us young. It's comedy. When yeah, you leave the it. comedy bubble and you go into the real world, you oh, see your friends, you're like, oh, life. no. <laughs> what happened? You right. Remember, remember that movie Time Machine yeah. when he kicked the dude out the bubble and he yeah. was like, yeah. skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the when suburbs. That That's yeah. when they get on the comedy. Oh, really? You get on the show business, you're through. Then you Everybody I know got out, got fat. Look older. Well, also, you don't have to, like, be in front of people, people anymore. You're not that, conscious about it. Right, right. You don't look at you as much. Yeah. I'm sure you look at yourself in the mirror, but, like, you're not, you're not going. When you feel eyes on you. Well, also, just like you said, you said you taped the TV show. Yeah. And you go, now you got to see yourself. That's why you, season two of a reality show, you always see the people look totally different than they look season but, but one. But any show. Totally. But, but any show, even on uh, HBO, when they try to, like, do these uh, hip, like, alternative, like, um, you know, narrative shows or whatever, the second season, the mm. lead is always thin. Thinner, is always better mm. looking same with friends look at the first season and then look at the fifth season they all got thinner right well, well then except they, for uh well then matthew perry like he, he you know <laughs> oh, he went well, for he was, well he was doing drugs too yeah it wasn't yeah. so he was a drugs guy right, so right. you know that's that you see on camera and that's how you come to terms with it i'm sure just in the same way alcohol makes me easier for me to eat at night right made right. it easier for him and Probably to see himself on screen looking like a different person. Right. I don't think he cared, man. Like, he went through that whole series. He didn't... I think he was a cocaine guy. No, he I don't, was a big I, cocaine guy. Yeah. But he uh, he got so big, but when you saw him big, you knew he was healthy. Right. You knew he wasn't on his stuff, but I was like this. You, look, you don't look good. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. funny when they get so really get fat. Drugs, like it goes. <laughs> <laughs> drugs is healthy. The director's like, give him some coke. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't worth living for. <laughs> But, I mean, some people, once they get, uh, once you get fat, and you know you're big, and mm. then you get on, gotta be on TV, it's a nightmare. It's hard to look at yourself. It's a nightmare. It, 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 it's not it, even it, fair. Even if you don't like how you look, that's the thing. It's, it, you know, some people, you know, everybody's Regular size people. Right. Look fat as shit on TV. Well, that's the other thing. You, it's cruel. When you meet, like, or when you see someone who looks good on TV... Now, then you start to notice what that look is. Right. Like, like I see people sometimes, I'm like, that is a body that would work on T. You know, like, I am not. I Lumpy. <laughs> it's going to be lumpy. <laughs> I, was, I was actually thinking this. So you you got to know the comic Steve, Steve Rogers? Yeah. That's Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers is, is not a big guy. He's a no. little guy. Uh-huh. I looked at him. I didn't even say this. I'm saying this to you. I didn't say it to him. I go, I was like thinking in my head. I'm like, he is what the look of a leading man is. Right. Uh, who's he engaged to? Caitlin. Caitlin right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you know. Oh, that's short dude. Little, is that Shorty Rock? Yeah. 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 Little guy, but Little. also you look at him, I go, him and Tom Cruise, same. Yeah. 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 You gotta be a tiny I, thing. I, I actually thought I was like, I wanna see him next to Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a weird thought to have about a, another man, but I was like thinking it. Tom Cruise skinny as shit, man. Right. Little. <laughs> in real life, it's like a tiny little. 
little proportioned. They're like mini horses. Yeah, they have the same right. They have the same muscle structure of a horse, <laughs> but just mini. Yeah. I thought yeah. you know who I saw in the gym once? Uh, AC Slater. Wow. Yeah. He's a mini horse. Yeah, he is. Really? He's a he, and he is. he is strong. He's in shape. He's like a shrunken Clydesdale. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that when I saw him in the and gym, all I was like, them "Whoa!" Those little bodies too. Like all right. those fucking say about the battle motherfuckers is all oh, shorty right. rocks and people are much. If you they look thick on TV, they skinny. Right. To us. Right. That's. Right. I mean, to me, that's the like the Rock must be like. I I wonder what the Rock looks like in person because. He looks good, he, or I guess you got to get jacked up you, to be oh, big and that. Yeah. It's also genetics. Be the, yeah, there's, the genetics are a huge part of that because, you know, yeah. you can do what he does. You're not going to be that size. It's like Terry Crews. You know Terry Crews? Right. Who's diesel. Mm. I did the TV show with Terry for two years. This motherfucker get up at 4 a.m. every day and work. So he was going after it. He always went after it. Right. Like, well, he's a football player. Stop? He was a football player, yeah. But when you stop, like, because the bulk that he had on for football wasn't the bulk he was doing for TV. No. So he had to come down from that Different shit. bulk, yeah. Right. Well, you see- always proportioned like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And now in, uh, like, uh, the, uh, un, uh, what's uh, the fucking Stallone's movie? The, uh, um, uh, the, when all the old guys came together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he the replacements? Gong is next to them. <laughs> Cocoon. No, uh, uh, the one with, uh, <laughs> replacements, irreplaceables. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, that, uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he looks diesel as right. shit next he's to Stallone. He's on human But when you see Stallone, Stallone, Stallone's like that tiny dude. Tiny. Well, it's crazy. The other one is like Schwarzenegger. You see... Shorty Rock. Right. And then you see him on the beach, and he's all like... He looks like he's melting. And it's like... Even but in clothes, you're like, he, he looks fine. Yeah, because he's so small, but all that is packed into this little body. Right. It's crazy. Well, uh, the blah, those guys are in uh, human growth hormone. Who is? Stallone. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, you didn't know that? Well, I, I assume they're all doing something. Yeah, if you're not in a sport. A testosterone, you know, a little whatever. HG. If you ain't got, like, some governing board trying to tell you you can't go to Hall of Fame. <laughs> right, why wouldn't you? Do it. <laughs> right. Especially for, like, Hollywood. Yes. Like, it's not like, yeah, what are you, you're competing with nothing. Like, yeah. there's no, <laughs> just get in there, you know, got to look good. They're not going to take your Olympic gold away from you. No, 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 they're going to take it. The Oscar's been taken away. We heard he was on HGH. You know, like, I don't think that's <laughs> <laughs> never happening. Uh, I heard Bobby lost a lot of weight. He did. He got I the heard. surgery. He got the surgery. Really? The, is it the, the sleeve? The yeah. Yeah. Sleeve, yeah. Another friend of mine got a sleeve, too, and she looks, she looks amazing now. She dropped, like, fucking 80 pounds. So, did, uh, yeah. A lot, yeah. I think Melissa McCarthy lost uh, a bunch of weight, too. I don't know if like she got the band, thing, though. Like, tiny. It's, it's like a I, w- I, I guess I, I got to ask him, but, like, the, the e- I heard it's, like, it can be tough. Because you get full so fast. Uh, full so fast, and, like, you know. All this looks better on him. Like, he yeah. was getting. Ugh. His face looks better. Well, that's where you I lose it. I see his structure of his face again. Right. Bobby used to be a skinny dude, man. No, I've seen the picture. I've seen I was the- there. He was like Carmine Ragusa from <laughs> Laverne and Shirley. Always dancing, stupid curly hair for no reason. But I even noticed, like, you know, you stop. Like, if I stop drinking for a week, I see it in my face right away. Right. It's your face. Yeah. Right away. Cheeks come down a little bit, you know, and you go. Man, my ex-girlfriend used to call the extra fat on the hair a badoop. <laughs> badoop. <laughs> you see me on TV with the badoops? <laughs> like, I was on Raw of uh, news. I think it was like CBS News somewhere, and they caught me from the side, and I saw the badoop. Mm. I went immediately out and started working out. <laughs> I don't ever want that turkey fat meat right. under there ever. That's the worst thing. What did you do for the Tonight Show before? You, did you like do a special diet or did you just stop drinking? No, I, just, I, you try, I think if, for me, it all starts with drinking. Yeah. If, it, if I'm not, if I took, I, I, but the, the problem is I hold on to that. Right. I go, if, oh man, if I took a month off of drinking, I'd lose 30 pounds. And then it's like, that's not true. Right. <laughs> you know, like that's just not that's, true. That'd be pretty but impressive. Right. So much, oh, speaking of drinking. <laughs> but I, Mimosa? I, yeah. Hey now. Okay. Oh, so we're doing the, we're doing something. I gave, I gave him your likes, and he's okay. uh, he's gonna come out here with uh, what we're doing. All right, let's. Oh see. shit! Here we go. Look, this uh, is the only uh, podcast that feeds you. So, what have you eaten already on this show? That was that was uh, we did a big barbecue thing. That was great. We that's what we kicked it off with. Mm. Uh, we uh, we did some homemade chicken parmesan. We did a truffle lasagna for uh, yeah, Berger, Zona. Uh, last week last we did. Week. Uh, we, we, um, for Eric D'Alessandro, he, he was getting married two days later. 
So we did a, he named it the honeymoon because it's a burger on top of a, like buffalo chicken, fresh cheese. That's what he liked? That's what he wanted, yeah. Really? Yeah. It was good. That, People's got it weird was food weird, taste. but it was good. Yeah. I'm sure, I, that's a thing. These are, you know, just like, you know, we go do comedy, like, and we go, how do you do it? How do you know? People say to us all the time, how do you come up with the material? Yeah. I have the same thought with chefs. Yeah. How do you Probably. think of this? Yeah. How do I mean, you think of those two tastes going together? Yeah, well, so like the truffle lasagna, which was a uh, vegetarian vizarna garg, right? Mm. So, and like you wanted fried rice. Like that's a. Right. Who the hell knows what people ask for? Right, you know? right. Well, you, I, I thought it was going to be one or the other. So I gave you some options. So I didn't, you know, fried rice to me. Oh, you thought we were going to lowball you and just give you a side? I don't know. I, I, I don't have, but I, uh, I guess this does represent what I would have in a drunk night. Okay. Because it would be a mix of two things that don't go together don't go whatsoever. Together. I yeah. love that, though. <laughs> I like two, three things that don't right. have no business mm. near each other. Oh, man. All three from different delivery apps that's, coming yes. at once. Ah, that's An a Super Bowl Armada. party. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> the drivers are looking at each other like, are we? We going to the same place? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you going to Jared, too? <laughs> Do you have to pretend there's more people in your apartment? <laughs> You're here, guys. Right, yeah, don't worry. A lot of different eating things in this apartment. Everyone's got different dietary restrictions. You just see the flying V of delivery bikes coming towards my apartment. Yes. Just all from different nationalities. Yeah. I'm trying to push the buzzer. Right. One's got a pizza. One's got a Chinese food thing. Another guy's got a burrito. Yeah. That's... So that's I've done that. Super Bowl Sunday. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Super Bowl. Yeah, that's all. Oh. That's another eating time. Football. Thanksgiving, Football starts. Holidays. That's the allowance, too. We're all getting together. You know, tailgate. You know, I went to Penn State when the Penn State guys get. Yeah. When, the more Penn State wins, the more we get together. So, like, when Penn State loses, the bubble bursts. Right. People go, oh, I got shit to do. If they're winning, if they're undefeated, the, and this happens at a lot of big schools. So you, if they're 8 no, Fat it. You're every week is bigger than the last. You're, right. you're preparing more. You're right. So you're pre- you're uh, I'm gonna have another drink. I'm having four drinks this week instead yeah. of two because we decided and we're gonna get a big buffet and we're Those gonna have nachos you know, and right before you know it. And then you get to like you know if your team makes it to the national championship, you're having a big party. Oh, now they call you the sugar bowl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Cheers. <laughs> talking about not drinking. Here's your drink. Not, I, I'll cheers, everybody. Oh, let's do it right here. We like to to treat our guests. Right. No, I'm. I'm Food's I'm, fun, though. That's the problem, man. That well, that's what brings people together. Just like the Sunday night thing with Chinese food. I told you, like that's what it is. Like, it's and some people don't have that at all. And I'm not sure if I'm jealous of them or I pity them. Pity. Lenny Marcus is not a food guy. Not a food he's guy. Not like food. like he he eats, but he just doesn't care. It's and not. he like basic stuff like wings. He'll eat wings. Yeah, but, but he, it's not like what makes him happy or sad. I don't no, think. I don't no, think not at all. He doesn't that. care at all. One of his no. bits is like his wife is very concerned with what's for dinner, and he does not. He doesn't even want to talk about it. Right. Ser- like that family that did cereal for dinner depressed the fuck out of me. Ooh. That would depress me. Cereal for dinner, like, and I remember. Depends on the night. If I had a big lunch, I'll do cereal. Well, no, but just the idea. I just growing up. This is if my dad was like, "Let's do cereal for dinner. I don't want anything." I'd be like, "What's happened to this family? (laughs) What's what's going on? Divorced? What's going on? There's something you got to talk to me about. Are we okay?" (laughs) That was my first thought. I I swear to God, I'd be like, "What's going on? Are we? Is something wrong with the the the, 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 the nucleus here?" How old were you when that happened? I mean, I could, as far back as I, rem- I can remember, that would right. be my whole life. Like, it would be like, even if I, I as, as long as I've been aware right. that dinner was a thing. Right. <laughs> what do you do on dates? Do you go big? Or uh, no, do you- I, I do drinks. First date's a drink. Dinner, I, I used to do more dinner dates. Right. I'm out in that game. I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I backed I off of that. Girls, I'm already banging. Most okay. of right. I want to. I want to have fun when I go for dinner. Again, I want to have fun. Right. I don't want any chance. I want to know the person I'm eating with. Right. And and that's probably a, not the because that's how you meet people over food too. That there's a part of that. You got to eat with each other at some point. Right. But I definitely like. I remember I was dating someone and our first meal together was like late night having wings at a bar, being a little drunk, and that was like. Fun because we're like doing something loose. To, loose, hang, good. But it, 
You know, it's not like a. F- I think a formal dinner can get like too formal. It's almost All like, right. it's like a dump. You oh gotta my. drop this bitch this off. Is- I don't know what's going on here. What is this? Oh, snap. This- oh, so you combine the two. Oh. Look at this. There you go. Good lord. We're gonna we're gonna figure out what this is. Oh, it smells great. You gotta. Ex- what is it? What am I looking at? That smells good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got to jump on uh, one of the mice, so just uh, bang over. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. All right. So, Jared had said he wanted a bacon, egg, and cheese or fried rice. Right. So, oh, bacon, egg, and cheese to fried rice. So, Chef Raff right. put together, it looks like fried, it looks like bacon, egg, and cheese on top of fried rice. Mm. Yeah, so. Too. Well, happy cheat day, everybody. It's all right. We have four. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Yep. Yes. So, please, tell us what, what we're looking at here. Yeah, so, kind of hit the head on a nail. It is, uh, yeah, like just the bacon, egg, and cheese fried rice. It has all of the classic components. Okay. Of bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh, we eat on mic, so just knock it out. You don't have to wait. Yeah. Don't, don't stand yeah, no, on that. Please, please, please go nuts. Uh, there is some pork belly in it. You have some kimchi, baby corn, shiitake mushrooms. And then just straight up bacon, egg, and cheese on top. There's scallion pancakes in it as well to kind of oh. act, act like the bagel. The scallion pancake, one of my favorite appetizers. Most underrated. Doesn't get a lot of love. Got lucky All places don't one. have them, yeah. Yeah. And, and you nailed it, though. You, I mean, you didn't know that. I did not, no. But, it, you know, everyone really likes wow, scallion pancakes. What is kimchi? Uh, so it's cabbage that you lacto-ferment. For could be multiple months. Um, it's basically just adding salt, vinegar, spices to cabbage. Classically, you're adding shrimp paste, um, Korean chili flake, and then you can really just do whatever you want. Just really know. You do whatever you want. You can use any fruit, really. Use a bunch of different vegetables. It Usually. feels like people talk about kimchi the same way they talk about like sourdough starter. Yeah. Like that, like every family has their own. And there's different ways to do it. Is that like a... So, so that is a thing, yeah. Like people, they will have a separate fridge for their, chem, for their kimchi. That's which amazing. Which is, um, yeah, I mean, it smells horrible if you have it in your fridge. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty pungent... I mean, it's like cabbage that is going bad in a controlled setting, you know? This is delicious. Is this That's just regular... the food, though, right? What, what's the cheese? Uh, it's just American, and then there's like... Classic to Korean bar food. There's cheese in the kimchi fried rice. Wow. Which is, it's what you want. Five in the morning. Mm. You know? What do you think, Jared? This is deli- unbelievable. It has everything I want. In my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my thought when you said, finally someone said something different than fried chicken or like a smash burger or something like that. Is that what people usually say? It's pretty common. It's Comedians. Pretty common. Comedians yeah. are like, I don't know, I like chicken fingers. And, that, and that's it. Yeah. Well, my thought is like, what would I have when I'm hammered? Coming back from here, well, in my dream, it would be like a big bacon, egg, and cheese, and then just a vat. Just a vat. Of fried rice. <laughs> like an ice cream tub. Right. Mm. That is kind of the move, though, breakfast after drinking. Right. And what I love about the rice... Clumps together. Yeah. That's why I like in the fried rice when it's clumpy. Yeah. Starchy. That's how it gets fried to show up. We just feed them. Right. I don't... Yeah. I didn't even know you do it, Paul guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Happy to have you back. I was, now you uh, put uh, pork belly in it too. Yeah, yeah. So it's so it's also um, um, Korean style pork belly. Mm. So it's like cut so that it looks almost like a like a checkered shirt. Right. So you like cut it so you can open it and see through it. Really? And then it's just grilled in like a minute. So super not, it's not a classic way to cook pork belly in any sense. Mm-hmm. But it, uh, yeah, it's... Good. Wow, it's good. There is more. I can, I can give you some more if you'd like. That may have been a record. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, well, Mark, Mark Norman had two pounds of pasta? He was, was pounds? yeah. That was, uh, yeah. He finished it really quickly, too. I'm a fast eater. That's also a problem I have. Yeah, no, that was that was speed. I thought that's a compliment, though. I move yeah. to your your abilities. No, no, yeah. When when like people in a restaurant just kind of stop talking and just eat the food. That's when you know. Yeah. 
Did you have a late sure. night, buddy? No, not at all. No, I've just it's been uh, it's been a lot of work. What tells so. you people hate it? Um, like, I mean, I guess I'm like if lucky. Someone said I had nice energy on stage. I'd be like, Fuck <laughs> <it."> <laughs> <laughs> you spoke um, so clearly. Yeah. I mean, people like especially these days, they tend to kind of think that they know so much about food, just like regular right. idiots. Right. I mean, I don't. I mean, I will use the word idiot. Actually, right, I yeah. really want to use that word. That's fine. Um, <laughs> we said a bunch of worship yeah, on this show. Say, I was gonna say I don't want to use that word. No, I, I definitely do. Um, so yeah, they'll. I would prefer to hear negative comments than positive because you're not going to lie if you're saying something negative. Right. right. But I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a common thing where it's like not everybody likes everything, right? So somebody could just not like a certain preparation or not like trout, and you have it on a tasting menu, and like they won't tell you, and then you'll give them the course, and they're like, "Oh, I don't like trout." Like, okay, thank when you. When do you know people are lying? Um, In- just just when they like say it's interesting. Nah, just just like when somebody wants to get free shit or like they want to like create a connection with with a chef so that they can get hooked up. Right. Like right. they'll just be like, Oh my god, like that was the best thing I've ever had and right. buy you whatever or buy you a drink or something. Damn, Jared. I yeah, moved. good job, man. It's his cheat day. Good job, man. I mean, it's it it delicious. It was a sheet 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, we, can, uh, we can give you more off He's thinking about sure. the slice of pizza. Dude, I got a pizza post-game after The day's <laughs> ruined. The no, day's it, ruined. It's, uh, That's the point, yeah. This That's has, every, But this literally has everything I like. Mm-hmm. Like bacon. I mean, everyone loves bacon. But like, you, This might be the first time that we send you home with some food. Oh, my God. No, we I, might do that. But that. That's the other thing. I can't do leftovers. Well, you don't right, do I'll leftovers? Def- I'll definitely oh, eat them. Oh, all right. I was like, I do. I love leftovers. Get it done here. We do it here. We do our damage. <laughs> right? Yeah. And we get out. Get out. And then we, we, we walk away from it. So he is a he has a business. Something yes. good? Something good. Hospitality. And what yep. he does is, now this is interesting, mm-hmm. is you can hire him to cook in your house for like your date. Oh, oh really? I mean, I've explicitly said so many times, I will never cook for two people ever again. They Why? tried. To, they tried to fuck him. The fucking weirdest situation. Like it was oh, Valentine's really? Day as well. And well, you got to raise your prices for Valentine's. I did Day. for sure, and they they made it like I couldn't say no as much as I really wanted to. Like mm. it was just a so good you move. Fuck both of them. I mean, <laughs> I didn't. But they wanted you to. It well, you're was in just their so. Ha- you're in strange. their house. Yeah. You got to like kind of dance around them. I'm sure it's their. I mean, kitchen you're utensils. joining. No, no. I mean, that's that's like pretty standard. You no, know, I've been, been doing this for years. You're joining a date, which is fun. Really? So you, you have know? to hear them like talking. Well, they want like they're asking questions about the food. They're like trying to get involved, and they're just right. like also where, where really is intimate. this sourced? What's what's the meat yeah. story? See, see I, exactly. would, I would think <laughs> exactly. it's, th- that is harder in New York City than anywhere else. For sure. Hey, For if sure. you're in the suburbs, they got you're in the kitchen. They're out in the living room. Yep. They're having wine. Yep. They're putting that's some music thing, on. Yeah. That's different. Right. In the city, they're like, "Hey, can you move over? I'm washing yeah. my it's clothes." It's a studio next apartment. To you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, these these apartments are absurd. You right. Know, like, if you can afford to have somebody come cook in your house, yeah. like, you have quite a bit of money. You Did you ever go and cook for people in the Hamptons? Every week, basically in the summer. Every week. I what hate the Hamptons the, so much. I would. You imagine. mean you love the Hamptons? Hate it. I love it. I'll never forget. It. I follow. <laughs> I had to sell you. You worst. love the Hamptons. Well, no, oh, I, I follow yeah, this yeah. person oh, on yeah. social media, and they were showing their Hampton. They were basically showing like, oh, this is what we make in the Hamptons all the time, and then they're like, it's Chef So and So's recipe, and you're like, no, we don't make shit. He right. has yeah. a recipe. It's his thing. And what it seemed like, and please tell me if I'm wrong, is that these people kind of take you over as their own they get to kind of show it off and it's not you as you know so so that's a great point yeah so like the richer that the people are the more that they'll like introduce you to because because like they want to pay as much as possible right and they want to tell their friends that they paid that much right. and then they're like introducing you as like their chef which right. is not the case. Right. As, if, you're all, as right. if you get health insurance yeah. through them. No, I'm here for a paycheck. Right. Like, I will give it 100%. I'll make the food as, as delicious as possible. We have, you know, service from A to Z as far as, like, bartenders, sommeliers, yeah. you know, waiters, whatever. But as soon as the food is done, like, I'm, I'm cleaning up and getting out of there. It's like, yeah, go to your room now. Yeah. Yeah. She's our yeah. chef. I don't give it's a like, hug to little Lucy 
and say have a good week. Which is school. odd because Sherrod actually gives a hug and stays the weekend. <laughs> I know. Right. I, know. I mean, we've, office, we've been offered some. some we've been. I mean, I guess it's and not Rob's good to talk about this, but we we've been offered like some weird stuff, like stay the night, you know, yeah. hang out with us. Well, Hamptons people love having company stay over for some. It's a weird Hamptons thing. Yeah. They love when people stay over. You they have lo- to. They, well, they, because you're so far away from, uh, you know, maybe the city, so to speak. Also, no. The weirdest thing is there's no fucking lights anywhere <laughs> when you're driving around, like, oh, yeah, stock and you don't have service so it's like you know i'm I'm trying to get out of there i don't put my address in right away and then i'm like two blocks away and i'm like wow this might be the end of it i I don't know where i'm going i love it i can't even imagine if you did stay over what the next morning's like wouldn't that's got to be like oh no kicking the door they're like get up (laughs) there's just no there's no scenario where i would like i have to drive two hours back right i got there's no scenario i'd stay over no yeah, chance. Put on a, the radio. You're good. You're happy. You got, yeah. you, you got you don't, they don't know for comedians the, the night stay. They're, they're no. like, oh, we have well, an extra room. Get out of here. You have <laughs> like, a skill to offer me after the show's over. <laughs> yeah, not- you, don't, you don't want to stand up routine in the morning, right? No, like, you, you want wake eggs up, in like, the morning. Hey. <laughs> Y'all need like the communal van, like the girls who do the nails out in the Hamptons. You know the Asian women? They got a van that picks them up and takes them every morning. Really? Yeah. Oh, Back okay. From the that makes sense because you know where do you know where do the workers live? Yeah, they're not and gonna they, spend all their money on that shit. They're not gonna they, rent yeah. out there is crazy. It know? drops it right on Jamaica Avenue in Queens. Maybe we need to invest. How great is that? In a van? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want you want to start driving like, Asian yeah. ladies yeah. out there? Yeah. That's what I heard. I mean, yeah, back. yeah, we've been using like like my car, so we just play Django basically <laughs> for like however many people it is, and like you need a cooler, obviously. So we desperately need to get a van. A van, which, which we will. Are you, are you? Aren't they flying you to like Kansas or something to do some event? Oklahoma? Yeah. Oklahoma. What's happening yeah. in Oklahoma? Just doing a private event for these wonderful people that have booked booked our services. Oklahoma's tough to get to too. They're flying chefs out like comics. Yeah, right. Is it Black Wall Street? That. Is it what? Black Wall Street. Sorry. Not familiar with what that is. Black Wall Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Nobody got taught anything. This I time. would love to. Tulsa. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm in Oklahoma City. It's not. White people killed everybody and burned it down in 1920s. I hope to not be in that area. That sounds <laughs> atrocious. Yeah. I mean, it's been 100 years, so I assume it's been rebuilt. <laughs> I hope to not be in that years area. Ago, it's rebuilt and all the white people took the land. But, yeah, it's dead. I got you. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stay there. So, so, so I won't be part <laughs> Don't of that. Coming back in a van? Part of He's that just group. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to stay there. <laughs> okay. Let's just clarify. That's good to know. Not planning on moving to Oklahoma ever. Yeah. It's all right out there. How many people are you cooking for? Uh, I believe it's like a party of six. That's crazy know. to be yeah. like, we want this guy. But I guess this is crazy people to do that all the time. Comedian. Dude, people have so much money. Yeah. But right. like, you couldn't find a chef. No, I'm sure you're wonderful, but you yeah. can't find a chef in Oklahoma that you I don't f- think so. What's your specialty? So. Um, so like what makes what makes my company very appealing is that we don't really specialize in a certain cuisine. You go, you'll, so you'll 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 mix yeah. and match. And, and it's also like for a premium, you know, I'll make a personal menu for for you. Like right. for you, you'll just tell me what you like, make a tasting menu or family style, or whatever. And that's like very appealing to people. You know, what's some um, most amount of courses you've done in a dinner? When I first started this, I was a delusional idiot, and I, and I missed kitchens. So I did like a thirteen course one. <laughs> Yeah, that's real. Cook, Thirteen cooking, cooking out of my brother's like shitty law school house with no oven and everything. Just stayed up like three days in a row and just executed it. But wow, haven't done. Yeah, it's it's been more of a business these past two years. That was like just fun. I've yeah. had from like restaurants before for my birthday, like a girlfriend or somebody got me. Like they'll they'll give you all the courses, like four, right. four or five courses, and you they mm-hmm. put it out. And, mm. and it yeah. was like just like being in a restaurant, but it was right. just there in, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. in the kitchen. It's a great experience. It, it is. is. Yeah. I love it. It's it's super different though. Like I'm I'm prepping everything at a place, right. and then I'm bringing everything to a new place that I have never been to before. In most cases, right. So it's not. It's like playing <laughs> on another team's in another team's stadium. Is it nerve wracking that you're gonna lose seen. your shit or you didn't bring something or? What's I, the I, checklist? I just figured it out, man. But I that's that's probably why those cooking shows are like they they work so well. Right. Because right. the chefs on them are never like, there's no this. Then right. they just make it. They just make it work. I mean, it, I mean, right. it, would, it would be so funny if you like go on chops or something like that. You're like, all right, this, I'm very comfortable. You know, I have everything I need. Right. Not stressing out. <laughs> right. that's, that's um, the whole premise yeah, of the no, show. I, I feel great. I have a plan. Um, okay, I'm done. But, but like, great. what if you show up and it's like a what is it a convection oven or like a crappy oven? Like, it doesn't cook the way you Dude, want it to. The, the amount of events that I've done thus far, like it's it's in the hundreds. 
and I have dealt with the most absurd shit. I like, believe it. You couldn't make it up. I believe you it. Really this is like stand up. The mic don't work. Right. Mic's fucked make it up. up. It you yeah. couldn't. You want me to perform next to the pasta guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I guess we'll make it work. You know, like and, I yeah, yeah. It's, right. it's insane. You probably get asked all the time, "Would you go on Chopped?" I I actually they asked me. My boy Dave Noel created yeah. the show. He's the executive producer. Yeah, Chris, yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy. Chris Wilde's brother. Oh wow! Well. But yeah, so Small they, world, you baby. see how close you are to I'm it. One degree, I'm very close. No, so they so they booked me to go on the show, and there was like a whole process, and I did like the Zoom call and everything, and I just had like I just couldn't. I'll I get couldn't you, do nigga. It. I no, no, you. I decided not Too to. Late now. Why did money on it? <laughs> Why did you decide not to? Uh, they wanted me to do it in like late November. And we just have to, I have too many things going on. Gotcha. It, it's just not worth like, I mean, uh, it's 10. We can work it out, man. What it's comes from Chopped? What They've owed me a favor. Just get money. Just the money. That's, and so I'm, there's, there's, there is exposure. Yeah, exactly. yes, that's what I'm wondering. Sure. Are they doing, oh, yeah. you know, is the 10 grand one thing, but like, is, are people like going on being like, okay, this gets me more jobs? I mean, potentially. Yeah. I feel like the demographic yeah, of people watching it is like so vast. Right. So. I mean, it's a good opportunity. I just, I kind of told him that I can't do it right now, but I'll right. do it at some point. Some point, yeah. Yeah. I'm He's on the cheat take show. He's busy. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, this is, this is my chops. Right. This show. That's right. Yes. And you're wearing the official cheater shirt. Yeah, I can't, by the way, um, I can't wear this outside. Because I have no credibility when I'm talking to, let's say, a woman in general. Oh, yeah. So I'm going yeah. up, she's like, oh. That's actually part of my sales pitch when I do it on like, stage. Like, Guys, if you don't buy this, your girl's going to know you're cheating. Right. Right. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, yeah, so I sold seven in, uh, yeah. in Wisconsin this weekend, just on that line. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I wore it one time last week, and, like, every time I would go into a bar, and, like, everybody's looking at me, but not for the reason that, I'm, that, that I would like. Yeah. That I would right. like for, they're just like, who's this asshole? Whenever I wear a shirt, I add an arrow that points down to my cock <laughs> so I'm cool up here but okay. that nigga's a cheater <laughs> yeah that might that might get you a better reaction I don't run I don't sure. run the show for him yeah. <laughs> that's right well we're gonna get Jared another plate right. here but no, let's I'm, I'm good this was delicious I loved it well let's do some plugs okay plug. absolutely that's who right. wants yeah. you sir you're the yeah. you're the master of the talent show. so you can find me on the Instagram at chef raff myc um with a ph and something good dot myc as well on the Instagram, and yeah, something good hospitality is the project that I am rigorously working on every single day. And they're available and for parties coming up in December, yeah. November. Yeah, this we is excellent. yeah we actually only do personal parties for two people now. We are okay. pivoting towards really? that. Really? So if it's not a date, you're not joking. I'm um, absolutely. Even though you just said you I didn't just, like it, I'm, I'm I gonna, could not be less serious. <laughs> I, 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 I hope some rich guy just hires you and he's like, it's just me. <laughs> just I honestly, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> like, if you pay enough, like I'll, I'll just put headphones in and cook. Just one day, like feed me it too. <laughs> what do yeah. you think Yum. of food porn? Like, what do you think of food Are that isn't, saying, isn't made to be good? It's made to be looked at. Oh, I was thinking you're talking about like just licking whipped cream off no. nipples. And, <laughs> that's fun. That's that's well, good. because I I once I did this food thing once, uh, like a TV show thing, and there was a chef there, and I was like, "What's your specialty?" I asked the same question, yeah. and he goes. I make things colorful. And I go, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, TV. I just like colors. That's and an I'm, end of conversation right there. Right. I was like, I guess then you might, to me, that's like, you know, you don't cook anything. Yeah. Right? Like, that's crazy. It, it, so because, you're talking about the yeah, stuff like online where it's like, uh, you just, it just looks It drips. Or, right. or, or, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Like, TV commercials. like Seems like a yeah. weird answer. That's what I was. But I mean, he's used to doing TV food. Answer. TV food and food is different foods. Like when right. they do all the close up shots and all they spray I mean, it's a all market, kinds right? of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a business, just like anything. <laughs> it's glued, the milk right. and the cereals glue. The feast for the like, eyes. Yeah. I mean, if you're making money on it, I respect what, what you're are you doing. Gonna do? Either yeah. way, don't matter. All right. Pluggy plugs. Yeah, how many podcasts? I got seventeen podcasts at go. Jared Freed on Instagram. That's all you got. Incredibly do. impressive. Incredibly impressive. The the and 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 what are you doing in December? I'm taping a special. Taping nice, a special, man. December eighth. It's already it's sold out. It's done. Spike the ball. Where is it? Where is it sold out? Gramercy Theater. It's so all, there you go. We got two shows. This is incredibly impressive to me or anyone, but I remember in New York City there was yep. only four guys that or four women that, that could sell out in New York at a club. It was Brewer, uh, Pablo Francisco, Harry mm. Spears, 
Uh, Tosh was one of them, but like other headliners weren't selling out. Yeah, right. you sold out two of the Gramercy. Thank you, man. I'm I'm very excited. So Stoke. December eighth, we're gonna tape it. Hopefully, remember you used to be like this. When I get spots at the cellar, I'm like, stupid and drive. <laughs> <laughs> we better be able to be late. You saw that. <laughs> they grow up so your kids grow up so quick, sure. Yeah, my babies, all grown up now. Nah. Pluggies, yes. Yeah, uh, we're, we're podcast coming back next week. We got Rachel You Could Tell on, and then, uh, yeah, second season of Harlem started on Amazon Prime, and then second season of uh, um, Girls Five Ever on Peacock, and uh, everything's going to be all white on Showtime. Watch that. Cool, man. All right, this is uh, the. You gotta eat! <laughs> the Cheat Day Show, we're sponsored over here at the Comedy Cellar, incredibly supportive. You can find us all performing here. Uh, and Chef Raff hangs out here occasionally. I do. Uh, and sure. uh, it's uh, at the Cheat Day Show on all platforms. Uh, I'm Ryan Reese. You can find me at RR Comedy on Instagram. You guys were awesome. Have a great Cheat Day. Yeah, yeah. Cheat Day, baby. Awesome, dude. Thanks for listening to the Cheat Day Show podcast. To learn more about our show, the hosts, the comedians, our guests, our chefs, and more, visit our website, thecheatdayshow.com. Also, follow along with us on our social media at The Cheat Day Show on Instagram and Twitter. Future episodes can be found in all the places you get your favorite podcast. Our show is also sponsored by the world-famous Comedy Cellar on McDougal Street in New York City's Greenwich Village. Visit ComedyCellar.com for show lineups happening seven days a week. Later, cheaters. <laughs>